Hi everyone, it's Jay here. Today I wanted to talk about the social dilemma and how it specifically affects people working in the tech industry. The questions that came to mind after watching this film were if I and my friends uh, were contributing as part of the problem, not only as users, but as the data scientists and engineers that were building the AI to eventually create the demise of society. Am I part of the problem by also creating a pro product interview query that basically helps data scientists land jobs in tech. And if you're not in tech, but you're considering a career in it, are, should you still do so given the ethical uh, considerations that the film makes? Let's dive into it. All right, first off, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend that you watch it. While many people who actually work in tech won't be learning any net new information, ultimately the documentary still does a great job of telling the story and giving great examples about how social media could be destroying us from within. The actual revelation that social media and tech platforms could be addictive, creepy, or actually detrimental to our mental health isn't that surprising to anyone, uh, to anyone that actually uses Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, I guess. Instead, the social dilemma focuses more on how a group of designers, engineers, and technologists went about creating some of the most revolutionary platforms of our time, but now threaten the existence of humanity. Surveillance capitalism is really only gonna get better and better at targeting us in the future with better complex AI systems that will make choices for us, not on actually what is necessarily good for us, but what is good for the co company that is actually uh, we're using. So in my opinion, the whole documentary was really good. The only downside to me was the strange Black Mirror vibes that I got from it. It was a little tacky, especially when they showed like a high schooler being controlled by a secret room of fat versions of, of himself, uh, sporting like Tobey Maguire, a uh, Spider-Man 3 hair. That was kind of, eh. <laughs> Let's start out with the first question. Is it okay to actually work in tech? Yes, I would say that it's completely okay to strive to be successful, make a good income, and work in technology. And while there are dire implications for what many of these tech companies are actually doing right now, we should still be okay with moving up in the economic ladder and doing better for ourselves and working on businesses and services that many people do actually really need right now. Ultimately, what I think we should be more conscientious about is understanding what we are actually signing up for when we join these companies like Facebook and Google. I'd rather each person at uh, Twitter, Facebook, Google, whatever, watch The Social Dilemma, get an opinion on what their company is doing and prioritizing, and then come to their own ideas on how to actually fix and solve the problems that they perceive to be the most important. We have to remember that these co corporations are actually made up of people like us, and no one actually wants to create bad things. So it's up to us to go in with a mindset that we want to go and continually have our own opinions challenged time and time again, as well as doing good for the world. What we do not want are people that are blindly ambitious going to these jobs and saying, yeah, Zuck, great job. I don't care what you do as long as you make my Facebook shares go up. That kind of attitude is conducive of over, like very toxic, and it's basically what you see on blind today. So let's say that you do work in tech. So now how can you actually make a difference? Nowadays, it seems like the obvious solution to many of our problems lie in the extremes, but actually throwing your phone into the ocean, deleting social media completely from your life and protesting outside of the Google building is not the path towards actually stopping these companies that have such a wide reach and power the core functionality of our day to day. Finding a mediation between our basic life goals and working towards a better future is pretty imperative. This means not only being cognizant, of what your company is doing, but speaking up and influencing where you actually can and where you have the control to do so. There was an article that came out last week about the data scientists that quit her job at Facebook from the stress and tolls trying to stop foreign governments from influencing different elections on the Facebook platform. It gave insight to the kinds of integrity work that Facebook was working on themselves. Her job was so difficult because not only did she have to find the bad actors by diving through billions of data points, she also had to convince leadership to work through office politics and get them to take care of different issues within foreign democratic countries. Imagine going to your boss and saying, hey, I found about a million different fake news postings on the presidential election in Azerbaijan. Can I put in a JIRA request to take these down? And your boss goes, 
Hmm, actually, I'm on PTO, so please don't ping me again. That's just crazy, right? Like, we're just regular workers and we have to deal with influencing these different elections or maybe not influencing them. The downstream effects that these companies have on our population are huge. We've never had this kind of power placed into the hands of corporations before. And so depending on how much of an optimist you are, there's really only two different scenarios. You could join the company with strict moralistic ideals and try to fix the platforms from within, or you could find some way to regulate them from the outside. Ultimately, it kind of goes to show that the idealism for fixing uh, what's broken right now has to come from the top. And whatever your ideology, you'll find that the corporations might be slowly turning into governments, each with different kinds of ideologies, each battling out how they should actually rule, given how big the platform is itself. Lastly, I want to touch on if data science and machine learning can evolve on these platforms to focus on the well-being of ourselves instead of the corporations. When I first started surfing, uh, I started going as much as I could on the weekends, before work, after work, even during work times and times. And then I started seeing surf videos on my Instagram feed and in different ads to the point where now I can't really tell the difference between the surfers I follow and the ads I get. Now, four years later, would I have been so interested in surfing if I didn't see these professional surfers all the time on my phone and on YouTube, uh, recommended in videos over and over again? They decided for me, my interest will be surfing and my preference will always be surfing, even if intrinsically, I don't know if I ever would have fallen out of the sport had it not permeated every single part of my life, right? This is a scary thing about big tech. I want the best effects without the actual bad effects. We need to allow users better control and customization of how technology should fit in with our own life goals. I'd be open to sharing more of my privacy if I could customize it to actually improving my life over the long term. So for example, I would share my location all the time if it was on a platform that could accurately alert, accurately alert me to a friend that was at a nearby coffee shop while I was walking down the street so that we could hang out or maybe another friend that was playing tennis or wanted to go surfing at the same time I wanted to. These are actual like real predictions that are possible today that I would be totally okay with. The only problem is that the likely answer for such a useful AI to actually exist is that the platform will take advantage of saving my data and only give me the benefits that only overlap with their benefits. Which is why I think our current model of building technology is something like this will never really exist and not that the users will ever accept as well. So ultimately, I think at the end of the day, the most important thing we should be doing is keeping the topic of the social dilemma at the forefront of our mind. At the end of the film, they didn't really have any answers for how to fix the problem or fix the issue because ultimately they didn't really know how to fix it. Just like how we don't really know how to fix climate change, even though we know it's happening. Well, at least most of us do. <laughs> Not knowing the solution to huge problems is pretty much how humanity has dealt with all the challenges throughout history though. And so hopefully we can overcome it. But until then, like and subscribe. <laughs>